My name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Detections, a new module in the Security Onion console that we initially released in version 2470. Detections is a one-stop shop for all the various rules that your Security Onion installation uses to alert on suspicious or malicious activity in your environment, and a huge step forward in making those rules more easily implemented and tuned to reduce false positives and analyst fatigue. Past releases of Security Onion often required this rule tuning and maintenance to be done with command line tools and manually editing YAML files from a console session. With Detections, all of that can be done quickly and easily in the SOC web interface. Let's get started. There are three main sets of detection rules in Security Onion, which each alert on a different type of indicator. The first are the Suricata rules that act as signatures for the network IDS component. For most users, these rules come from the Emerging Threats Open rule set, but some deployments use the paid ET Pro rule set instead or sometimes custom rules generated from threat intelligence feeds. These rules are applied to network traffic observed by the monitoring interfaces in your Security Onion deployment, raising alerts when a network flow matches an enabled signature. Sigma rules search the logs stored in the platform for particular signifiers or patterns. If you're collecting endpoint or external logs using the Elastic Agent, Sigma makes it very easy to write detections that leverage that collected data. When enabled, a Sigma rule is converted into an Elasticsearch query that is then run against your data every few minutes looking for matches to alert on. In detections, these are sometimes called ElastAlert rules, because ElastAlert is the name of the component that's running these scheduled queries in the background. Finally, Yara rules are leveraged by Strelka to evaluate files that are captured from plaintext network flows. You can think of Yara as a very advanced string parsing and matching library. If you're looking for particular characteristics in a file, like the libraries that an executable imports or the macro setting for an Office document, Strelka can check for those and then alert you if something requires further attention. With detections, we took these three disparate rule sets and put them all in one place for easy evaluation and tuning. Let's take a look. As always, we log into the Security Onion console with the username and password that we established during installation. You'll notice on the left-hand side of the screen, we have a link to the detections interface. Let's open that up and take a look. The interface for this tool looks similar to Hunt, Cases, Alerts, and the other components in the Security Onion console. There's an Options menu at the top that contains some more advanced options, and then a Query box here with a drop-down menu. In the upper right corner, you'll see there are status indicators for ElastAlert, that is Sigma, Strelka, and Suricata rules. Right now, these all say OK, indicating that there are no current issues with the rule engine. The most common error to see here is rule mismatch, which indicates that there's a mismatch between the rules that are deployed in your grid and the rules that are enabled in detections. This is often due to manual rule tuning in a pre-detections version of the platform that was later upgraded. Clicking on the words rule mismatch in this case will open a hunt window and show related logs to help you find the conflict. Clicking on the Options menu here at the top, you'll see there's a slider switch similar to the one in Hunt to automatically refresh the view when you make a change to the query parameters. There are also two buttons for rule updates. A full update will check each rule on your local disk individually and make sure that it matches the contents of detections. A differential update will use hash values to check for changes and only synchronize the rules into the detections database where there's a mismatch, so it's a bit more performant especially in the case of something like Suricata rules, where a common rule set might have tens or thousands of individual rules in it. Going back to the query bar, this is much like the one in Hunt, where you can enter arbitrary text if you like. For example, a word like Mimikatz to look for associated alerting rules. As you can see, there are 64 different detection rules here with the word Mimikatz in them. You can also use one of the preloaded queries in this dropdown. If I want to see just the currently available Sigma rules, I can click on Detection Type, Sigma, All, and see them. You'll notice that my group metrics tables here have updated. I now have a table indicating which rules and rule sets are enabled, one showing the category of the rule, 
That is, is it alerting on endpoint process creation events, on file events, on registry keys being set, and so on. And one showing the source of the logs that the rules are evaluating. So for example, if you're in an environment where you're ingesting Azure logs, you might want to click on this Azure log source and then include so that you can see all of the related rules. As with elsewhere in the SOC interface, you can use these tables to dynamically update your query. Scrolling down, you can see the actual rules here below the group metrics. There's a checkbox to the left of each rule title. If I want to run bulk operations across multiple rules, I can do that here. For example, if I wanted to delete or disable these three rules, I can do that here by selecting the appropriate option and then hitting the Go button. If I want to select all the rules that return from this query, I can use this checkbox above the first entry in the list. You'll notice that by default, it only selects the first 50, but I can absolutely select every Sigma rule and enable, disable, or delete them all if I like. Needless to say, you want to be careful with this, but it can be helpful for you if there's a particular category or class of rules that you want to disable. Just type a matching string into the query box, return all of them, and then use this functionality to disable all of them at once. To open an individual rule and see the details about it, I can click on this binoculars icon. This brings us into a tabbed interface with specific information about the rule. Here on the Overview tab, there's information about the rule, including its summary, references, and the actual Sigma detection logic that's been extracted from the rule itself. On the right-hand side of the window, there's a slider switch that can be used to enable or disable the rule, as well as duplicate and delete buttons that can either make a fresh copy of the rule, in case you want to use it as a base for modification, or delete it entirely. Before that is some metadata information about the rule, like its type, severity, what rule set it came from, the license, creation and modification dates, and the name of the author. The next tab, Operational Notes, allows analysts to enter notes about this detection, how it's been tuned, and its efficacy in our environment. This is fully Markdown compliant, so the formatting can be easily matched to your documentation standards. Detection Source shows us the raw rule that was downloaded from the repository. By default, Security Onion downloads the core and emerging threats add-on community rule sets from the Sigma project and also includes some Security Onion specific rules for things like our intrusion detection honeypot nodes and failed logins to the SOC itself. If you'd like to change that to include more rules, for example, the core plus medium severity rules, you can add that in the administration interface. Pulling rules from a custom GitHub is also supported if you have access to additional rules that you'd like to use. See our documentation for more details. Finally, tuning gives us an interface for modifying the rule's behavior in our environment. This interface is specific to the type of rule. Since we're looking at a Sigma rule right now, the only modification available is a custom filter that would be added to the detection logic. For example, if we wanted to exclude alerts from a particular host name for this rule, we could do that here. This will keep us from receiving these security event log cleared alerts from hosts with this particular host name. If we want to confirm that the filter is being added to the Elastalert query properly, we can do that by clicking on Detection Source and then this Convert button at the bottom. You see the filter right here at the end of the query, not host.hostname win 10 www For further testing, this Test in Kibana button will open DevTools with the query already loaded so you can run it against your Elasticsearch data, see what returns, and confirm that the filter is working as expected. There's also a History tab here that provides an audit trail so you can track changes that have been made to the rule. So Detections gives us a unified interface for seeing all the different rules in the environment, which is very handy, but there's more functionality to see. Let's start with an alert. If you've deployed Security Onion on an enterprise network before, you're no doubt aware that tuning Suricata rules is a high-priority task. We've exposed that functionality directly from the alerts pane with a new pivot. For example, let's take a look at this package management alert. Clicking on the rule name and then tune detection will bring us directly to this rules tuning tab in the detections module. If we decide that this rule is not helpful for our environment at all, we can disable it by clicking on the slider here under Operations on the right-hand side of the screen. Turning this off will disable the rule. 
So if you're in an environment with lots of Linux boxes that will be producing this traffic, and it's not helpful for you to know about it, you might want to just disable the rule entirely. If we need to do some more fine-grained tuning, for example, if we want to suppress the alerts coming from this particular IP, because that's our only known Ubuntu box, we can do that with the Tuning tab. Just click the plus sign here to add a new tuning parameter. Suppress, by source, and then we'll enter the source IP that we want to suppress. When we click Create, the tuning will take effect at the next high state, so within 15 minutes. Note that you can use a full site or subnet for this suppression, not just a single IP. So if you've got all of your Linux servers in one place, you can do them all at once. But what if you've got Linux web servers and a few different subnets in different data centers? Well, in that case, you might want to populate the HTTP servers address group variable in the configuration interface and then modify the rule accordingly. Variables are stored in the Suricata configuration, so we'll scroll down to Suricata, open up config, variables, and then address groups. Then we can put the subnets that we want into this HTTP servers variable. Let's say 192.168.1.0 and 10.10.1.0. Click the green check mark to confirm. And then that variable has been instantiated for use in Suricata rule tuning. So let's go back to detections and see what that Suricata rule actually looks like. The rule itself is looking for connections from home net out to external net. So we can modify it to say home net, but not HTTP servers. Let's go back to tuning. Plus, this time we're going to modify the rule. And the regex is we're going to take that home net variable and we're going to replace it with an array that says home net but not HTTP servers. So this will change that source parameter to home net but not HTTP servers. So long as that variable is kept up to date in configuration, you won't get any of these package management traffic alerts for your Linux web servers. The tuning change will go into effect the next time the Suricata and IDS tool states apply, which should be within 15 minutes. Finally, you can use this tuning interface to add conditional thresholding rules as well. For example, if you only want to see this particular alert if it happens more than expected, you can add a threshold here. A threshold rule will only generate an alert if a minimum number of events happen to trigger it. So for example, if you would normally expect something to happen five times or less in a minute, but you want an alert if it happens more than that, you would select threshold here. A limit will set a maximum number of alerts. So if something could happen a thousand times a minute and you don't want to flood the alert panel, but you do want to know what happened, you would select a limit here. For this example, let's make a threshold. We'll track this by the source IP of the originating traffic, and we'll set that to a six count and 60 seconds. Now this alerting rule will only fire if the same source IP triggers it at least six times in 60 seconds. Any less than that will not generate an alert. After that alert fires, the internal counter will reset, so generating another alert would require six more events in that 60 second span. Limits work in the opposite way. It will send those six alerts, but then stop for 60 seconds so your analysts don't get swamped. Thresholding is an incredibly powerful tool, but it can get complicated. For more options and information, check our documentation and the documentation from the Suricata project at docs.suricata.io. One last thing I want to mention before we move on from talking about Suricata rules. You may recall that in earlier versions of Security Onion, it was possible to enable or disable rules using regular expressions. That capability still exists, but it's contained in configuration. Here in the configuration interface, search for Suricata Engine, all one word. That will bring up the configuration interface for using a regex for rule management.
For details on syntax and what the order of precedence is for determining whether rules are enabled or disabled, see our documentation at securityonion.com docs. Finally, detections will allow for easy deployment of new custom rules as well. For example, let's say there's a new threat actor report that contains a Yara rule for spotting a particular indicator of compromise. If you want to put that Yara rule into production in your environment, you can just click on this plus sign to add a rule, select Yara from the drop-down list, paste it into the box, and hit Create. It will be pushed to your sensors with the next high state, and then any file Zeek extracts from network traffic will be tested by Strelka, raising alerts when there's a hit. The process for adding Suricata or Sigma rules is exactly the same. You just input them into this web interface, and they're pushed out to your grid almost immediately. One thing you will notice is that the box is pre-filled with a template containing the syntax for the rule language you're writing. For Sigma and Suricata, it will also generate an ID, either a signature ID or a UUID, that's unique to the environment, so you can put your custom rule in without worrying about collisions. How quickly this new rule will go into production depends on your architecture and the type of rule it is. See our documentation for more details. I hope you found this video useful and that it's helped to expand your understanding of how to tune your detection rules to your environment in the current version of Security Onion. The ultimate goal here, as always, is to give you the tools you need to make sure that every alert your analysts receive is accurate, timely, and worthy of further investigation. If you have questions about rule handling or the platform that were not covered in this video, please check out our documentation at securityonion.com docs. If you're interested in our training options to learn more about the platform, please go to securityonion.com training. And finally, if you have other questions or feedback about detections or Security Onion as a whole, please start a new thread on our community discussion forum at securityonion.com discuss. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day. Thank you.